When we're discussing chemical kinetics, we're interested in how quickly a reaction occurs. A generic reaction is reactant A plus reactant B combined to form some product. So there are vocabulary words all involving the word rate that we need to keep straight. So a rate is always a change in concentration divided by a change in time. This is just like the slope of a linear equation. And so we may be given two concentrations at various times and the two times that we're interested in. Or we may just be told that a concentration goes from this to this in 100 seconds. So this gives us an average rate or an average change when we're given two different concentrations and the time that it took for that change to occur. So a rate is always going to have units of molarity per second or capital M, which stands for molarity, moles per liter with second written to the minus one. So per second is the same as second written to the minus one. We can talk about a rate law. So the rate law is a mathematical equation where the rate is part of that equation and the rate is equal to K. K is a rate constant. Its units vary depending on the powers that M and N are. And then A would be one reactant, in this case, this one, and B would be another reactant. So the rate law must be determined experimentally. And so there's no way of looking at a balanced equation to see what the exponents M and N would be. Experiment. And you can't talk and write at the same time. So whenever we see data, for example, where we have three different experiments given, we are going to see that the initial concentrations of A and B would be given. And in order to calculate the rate law or to determine the rate law, we have to design the experiment so that we only ch we keep one initial concentration the same, in this case A, and we vary the concentration of the other reactant, in this case B. And then we measure the rate. So this value given would somehow be measured uh, with some instrument in the lab. In the back of the book, that rate is just going to be given. Notice the units on the rate. The rate is change in concentration over change in time. And then we would have to run a third experiment, in which case we would have to keep the other reactant constant. So B we are the ones that made up the concentration of B, so now we keep it the same, and now we see what happens to, or we change A as well. So we keep one reactant the same and change the concentration of the other reactant. And then we ratio the entire uh, experimental data. And so in this case we would write rate equals K A to the M B to the N. If I want to find M I'm going to pick the reaction where B is constant. So I'm going to ratio 
the experiments three to one. And if I do that just mentally, if I look at three to one, B stays the same, that's why I selected it, and A triples. So 0.819 divided by 0.273 should be a three. 0.819 divided by 0.273. When we ratio those two values together, we get the value almost equal to three. Oops, I did I plugged that in wrong. 0.819 divided by 0.273, and we get the number three. So we see that A tripled, so we have 3 to the M equals, and now we have to ratio the rates. So the rates that we're going to ratio come from, since we took this number and divided by that number, we have to come back and take 25.47 divided by 2.83. So we have to do this in the in a consistent order. 25.47 divided by 2.83 and we get the number 9. So 3 to the m equals 9. So we can tell by looking that the exponent on a or the power of a is equal to 2. And the whole goal of this is to find the powers and then to solve for the rate constant k. <clears throat> now we want to find what n equals. So that's when uh, a is constant and b varies. So we go look at our initial conditions and B changes from experiment 1 to 2, and we keep A the same. So if we can look, tell by looking, B doubles. 15, or 1.526 divided by 0.763 is 2. So I'm going to look at that. B doubles, and again we get that just from ratioing 1.5. 26 over 0.763, we get a 2. So 2 to the n equals the ratio of the rates. So this is 5.66 over 2.83. Again, we get the number 2. So when, we, when B doubles, we can automatically put that 2 there. So 2 to the n equals 2, which means n equals 1. So our rate law, rate equals k a squared b to the first power. And this is uh, too complicated of a rate law to do any instantaneous calculations. So recall that first order and second order are two very special cases. And when we happen to have a first or second order, then we can use all those other crazy equations where we plug values into the graph to see if the data is linear. So in this situation, we still have not solved for k. But this rate law is second order in A, first order in B. And again, it's outside of the realm of the first two most simplest rate laws. Recall, first order would be A to the first power. Second order would be A to the second power. And neither one of those would involve B. But if we can collect data like this, we can always find a rate law. So now we're going to pick an experiment, plug in the data, plug in A and B, M and N, and solve for the value K. Once
once we do that, then we will rewrite the rate law. This will be a 2, this will be a 1, and we'll solve for k.